Cancer, it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for February 2018. And before we jump in, I want to say thank you so much to my friends over at Hair Entourage for giving me a cute little piece to wear for you guys while I am transitioning my natural hair and growing it out. So thank you guys so much. If you are interested in their details, you can click in the description box down below, find all about, about the hair, find out about the company, and all of that good stuff. All right, Cancer, so this month... This is really interesting because first of all, we had a lunar eclipse that ended us in January, right? This was the lunar eclipse that happened in Leo, all of this good jazz, very good time in your second house. So certainly bringing some financial shift to you over the next six months to a year, depending on your chart. But really the eclipse, I don't know specifically if it was that intense for you. What will be, I think, intense for you this month is that we do not have a full moon this month because that was the full moon, right? That was our blue moon we had with that um, lunar eclipse. So we're not going to have a full moon and you being ruled by the moon, I think that you will notice that there's no big like endings happening this month. It's just kind of ready, steady. This month I think is very much so for you about wanting to explore new things, new territory, new concepts, actually wanting to enjoy life, maybe even getting out there a little bit to enjoy it. We do have the solar eclipse, which is going to be our new moon for the month. And this is happening in the sign of Aquarius. And for you, this is actually happening just opposite your second house in your eighth house. So a wonderful opportunity for new financial investments, directions to be taken. It's going to be in conjunction with some, or in, excuse me, not in conjunction, it's going to be making some aspects of some beautiful Uranus energy, which I think also gives you the opportunity to take on some maybe unconventional things with your finances or your intimacy, some unconditional, unconventional goodness things, um, maybe around sex, intimacy, maybe you're finally ready to study this astrology or something in a little bit more taboo space than you were before. But also the deep intimacy of the eighth house, looking at this new moon, this new beginning being here here also makes me think that you may be ready to showcase some kind of talent or a thing that you've been wanting to do for a while that you haven't quite exactly put out there yet. So over the next six months, I think you'll be starting to put that out there. So We'll talk more about that in just a second. Let's take a look at how this month is actually shaping up. We've got a lot of Venus influence happening this month. Very, very soft, very harmonious, coming into Pisces, a fellow water sign. So this is a very comfortable month, I think, for you in terms of this energy. And for you, it's going to be happening and kicking off these new ideas, new advancements, new harmony, um, a new, I want to use the word, um, delicious. I want to use the word luxurious craving. Like you really are craving to new, to know new things. And it's because it's happening in your ninth house. Things may be very spiritual or intellectual for you this month, right? And honestly, with Venus being here, she always likes to usher in some love. And you know, Venus, Neptune um, energy together, that's what I call the Bopsy Twins energy because they just love to be with each other. They like bliss. <laughs> they like romance. So, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe you have a romantic situation with someone you go to school with, someone you you are doing that licensing certification program with. Maybe it's the pastor. Maybe it's the um, maybe it's the teacher. Maybe you're falling in love with teaching or doing something like that. But it's a very romantic energy that doesn't necessarily have to be pointed at romance. It can be pointed also at something you're falling in love with putting out there, an adventure you're ready to take, travel, anything like that. But don't be surprised if some interesting chemistry doesn't come along in your world with another person as well. Um, just because this is the ninth house of different, right? Like we really like some things that are foreign to us in this energy. So all of that going on, then we get to the 15th and we've got the solar eclipse happening here in Aquarius. So also making this nice connection with eclipsing not just the sun, but also Mercury making a nice connection with some Uranian energy here in the eighth house. New beginnings, plant those seeds of intention. You've got something brand new coming, but also for something brand new to come, what may happen is that you put an ending to something else, but it's not a significant ending like if we had a full moon, okay? And I'm almost wondering too, just because this is this new 
turn of energy in this eighth house if you don't start investing in different currency maybe you're ready to actually make that move and you're not going to work in us dollars or your native currency and you're ready to work in something else bitcoin is still out there you know what i mean so there could be some of this interesting interaction with currency that's not your native currency as well so i will tell you if you did want to make some kind of investment or something like that this is a great energy to do that in of course depending on your chart but this is wonderful especially with this energy being very Aquarian. You could invest in something technological and it could be pretty sound. Okay, now as we get to the 17th of the month, I think things get a little bit sticky in terms of thinking and communication. From the 25th to the 28th of the month, I really want you to be careful because I think that communication can be very frustrating. Now on the 17th of the month, we've also got Mars coming into a square with Neptune. We've got Mercury moving into Pisces, putting Mercury in fall. Mercury's not comfortable here in Pisces because Mercury wants clean, clear cut, very specific conversation, right? We're making decisions. Shot. We're doing it. That's not the energy of Pisces, right? Mercury here is trying to make decisions in very, very blurry details. He's not sure what's what. Remember, Mercury wants to go over all those minute details and he cannot in the energy of Pisces. So this is a, not a strong place for making a lot of decisions. This is the place to allow your mind to expand with the idea of compassion, creativity, a little bit of fantasy, go with the flow, right? This is all happening in your ninth house. So investigate all of this fascinating new terrain that is available to you, right? But it does cloud the mind and it does cloud conversation. So if you are doing a transaction or something like that that happens to be more important, make sure everybody knows what's what is on the page, right? Including you. Don't sign that contract if you haven't thoroughly read over it and maybe had someone read it with you as well. You don't want to get locked into details because it's just too blurry. Then we've got the sun coming in, which the sun actually brings some light, heat, life, and vitality here. So we know there's action and movement in this ninth house. But we get to the 25th. Mercury comes into alignment with Neptune. And then on the 28th, Mercury comes into a square with Mars. This makes conversation frustrating it really really can and you can be prone to losing your temper so instead of losing your temper instead of freaking out because everything's not clear um, just back off see if you can come at it from a different perspective I mean really the month looks very very promising if you can just keep your tacos in a row and not freak out and remember that the energy for sure will pass and while it's here use it for that romance use it for the imagination use it for the fantasy and use it for the exploration all right, Cancers, I hope you have a great month. I look forward to seeing you, of course, in $3 Thursdays this month, where we are going to talk about transits as they relate to the natal chart. So if you're like, yep, I got the signs, I got the houses, but I'm not quite understanding what you mean when you say Mercury's and Pisces in this house. If you don't understand what the transiting energy is, this is your ish. Come get in. Click in the description box down below so you can join. And I also hope to see you in my brand new reformatted Astrology 101 class. And for the March session only, I am offering that session all five weeks for $50. So space will fill quickly in that. Click in the description box to grab your um, spot and to read more details about it. I love you guys. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next month. Bye, beauties.